Can you believe we're already on the second week of Peachtober? The first week had some pretty cool prompts. If you missed that video, I popped it down below. But for now, let's move on to week two. And the eighth prompt is River. Have we not had that one? Okay, so I'm thinking something a little bit surreal, like a mug of tea and like water dripping down the side in the shape of a river. Let's see what we choose. In the live stream, we came up with two very different ideas and I had no clue which one we were gonna go for. The first was doing a surreal piece that kind of looks like a river. Something like water dripping down a tea or like a tear dripping down a face, something like that. The second idea was a mermaid and in the end I chose this one. I love drawing mermaids and I've also never made one before with alcohol markers. I kind of did one in the Daily Doodle Diary before but it was really bad paper and it really didn't look great. So I thought why not, let's give alcohol markers a proper try and do my first mermaid. The colour palette for this one is very different to anything I would normally go for. It's like yellow, green and blue, which is not me in the slightest. But I kind of like it, I think it looks cohesive because the tail matches the landscape. So the mermaid doesn't look really bright and stands out, but as a piece I think it's quite peeling it's nice to look at because of how subtle it is i'm still trying to figure out alcohol markers i'm not sure i feel like this might be a little bit abstract it wasn't supposed to be super blended i like that the lines are showing but these markings are definitely a lot harsher than i was expecting so in that sense i'm not sure if it really went to plan Reaching for the colour pencils now to try and save this piece. Adding some classic squiggles to infer trees and define this character a little bit more. We're also drawing in some braids. Since we've kind of lost the braids and the initial sketch really. Going back to markers and adding in some lines to this tail. We can't not use pink. We're darkening the shadows on this person's face and around the edge of the river because I feel like it needs a little bit more contrast. And this is what the finished piece is looking like. It's actually the biggest mermaid I've ever drawn. Prompt number nine is apricot. I like that, I like that. That could be really fun. We could combine it with a person. We could do a bit of a fun portrait. It could be like a child. Yeah, I think we might do that. I think we might create a fun little character, a little like apricot child. For this prompt, we're using a subtle color palette, just yellow, orange, and green with just a little bit of pink. Last time we sharpened a few pastels, so this time we're just going to add a little bit of water and use it kind of like watercolour. Trying to use water with these Neo colours again and hopefully this time will go a little bit better. I'm trying lots of different techniques but really not sure what's actually working. It doesn't seem like layering tends to do much because it kind of picks up what's already down. So I'm not sure there's really much of a technique here. Other than popping down the colour and wetting it slightly, I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to use these well, but I still think this is my best piece so far using watercolour with these Neo Colour pastels. These are the number twos, which means they're water activated, and that's why we're able to do this. I'm using pink for the line work and dipping that paintbrush in again. Honestly, I think this technique worked really well. Definitely the way forward rather than trying to get crisp lines with just the pastels. In order to get these pastels to a sharp point, you really have to sharpen a lot away. And even then it doesn't come to that sharp of a point, whereas using a brush like this gave a really smooth crisp line. So I'm definitely a fan of that. Reaching for a pink colour pencil now, this was a spontaneous move. I had no clue whether it would actually work or not. It didn't layer very well on top of the pastels, but it worked well for what I needed, just for very specific lines. I was able to go over the lines and facial features and actually remake those eyes again and the nose that we kind of lost earlier on. I love how subtle this colour palette is and for the background we're just going in with some simple blobs making it look really cute and subtle. This apricot boy is definitely a step up from lemon boy last year. There's a lot more contrast and I think it's a real improvement. So I hope you like it. Moving on to prompt number 10, it is Pixel. 
Okay. Do you know Casey Golden? Because right now what I'm thinking of is the pixel art that they make. Obviously, that's using bits of plastic, and I don't have those supplies myself. What if we make a huge grid and kind of make it look like that on the page, like little blocks of colour? That could be fun. I got these sticky notes in a really recent haul. You might have seen it on my channel. These sticky notes are the closest thing that I have to grid paper. I looked, I don't have any, but I think these might work. It's black lines on craft paper which really stands out compared to the other pages. We're gluing in each individual page, lining up those grids, but unfortunately it's not completely symmetrical. Turns out one edge is a little bit longer than the other, so the grids don't completely line up in one corner, but it's fine. I tried lots of different markers, but in the end the Minami water-based markers won. Alcohol spread outside the boxes, the zebra mild liners could hardly be seen, and brush markers were far too difficult. This is the sketch. Grabbing this cute little pencil pot that I got to reach for those five Manami markers. This is the floral set, so we've got some lovely shades of pink. But how am I supposed to follow these markings? Pencil didn't rub out very well on this paper, so I've got the tiniest little pencil dots that I'm trying to follow to create this piece, and it's being impossible. Starting with the edge of the flags and the boat, the idea is that if I can get all of the line work down and correct, then really we just need to fill it in at the end. Adding in some of those clouds and the sea. We're gonna leave a lot of the background showing through because it's brown paper and it does actually look really pretty. But now for the fun part, we get to fill everything in. And suddenly a piece of art has just appeared out of nowhere. It really looks like it's all coming together now and this was a lot of fun to do. As soon as I could see the boat and the sky and the sea, I could add extra details because I could really see it all coming together. And honestly, I can't believe how well this worked. I have never done anything like this before and I'm super impressed. I even added some more clouds for fun. But now I am super tired because believe it or not, this is the fifth piece of art that I made in one day. I'm zooming through Peachtober this time. So yes, this is the fifth Peachtober prompt that I did in one day. Okay, we're doing well. We're moving on to the 11th prompt now, which is wheel. You could either loosely just do anything that's a circle. Or you could do like a car or like a blown out tire in a landscape in something. You could do a lot of stuff, really. I'm gonna have to get sketching. It will be a mystery to both of us. Grabbing a cup of tea and these SimTap acrylic markers. And now I've got some new purple glittery nails. Look how pretty they are. Let's get started. The idea for this one remains the same. We're drawing a car. I chose a cute little camper van as a reference because this one has a wheel on the front, which makes this prompt a little bit more obvious. But this idea actually came from one that I had for Daisy in the live stream. The idea for Daisy was like a Volkswagen Beetle with flowers coming out the top. And I kind of wanted to use this for wheel. But then I saw some pieces on Pinterest that used crazy colors and I thought, I want to give that a try. So the car is in a box. And there's going to be crazy colours. No, I messed up immediately. The plan is that each grid has a different colour where it joins and I've just completely gone straight into a different box. There's four boxes on this page and every time it meets we need a new colour. But luckily we're using acrylic markers so it's not the end of the world, we can just go over it. There isn't any kind of colour theme to this piece, we're actually using any and every colour in this set. And honestly, this was kind of therapeutic, I kind of enjoyed creating this piece. If it wasn't so painful all the times that I messed up, I think it really could have been a lot of fun. And speaking of, I messed up again, and again, and again. Had to keep going and double checking, triple checking the entire way through, because I just kept making mistakes. So in the end, we're left with a lot of mess because we use pretty much every single color in this set. Moving on to prompt 12, which is Earth. Have we had that one? Not last Peachtober, but the Peachtober before. Okay, it wasn't Earth. It was globe, and that's why I had the idea to originally put it on a globe. I don't know what we're gonna make for that. I don't know. 
Funnily enough, we are including a globe, which was the previous Peachtober prompt. And this globe is in a library, making a start on this bookshelf. And can you believe I forgot the transfer sheet? This could have gone horrifically, especially when the next piece is transparent. But luckily, nothing bled through just yet. We're using a pretty simple colour palette for this piece. I picked out some fun colours for the background, the patterning on the wall, a wooden desk and bookshelf, and muted colours for the carpet and rug. I honestly love this piece and I think it turned out so well, I really hope you like it. I love that it incorporates the prompt earth, but it's actually really subtle, I think it's hard to tell what the prompt is when you're just looking at this piece. The rug has a little bit of patterning on it, but I love how minimalist everything is. And now for the bookshelf, we're picking out some lovely pastel tones. This step was actually really fun. We're literally just grabbing a colour, doing a load of lines and filling in all of those books. There ended up being a lot more books than I was expecting, but I was just really having a lot of fun with this. Honestly, I think this might be the best one from week two. What do you think? I love that last year we did a scene in a room like this using coloured inks and then last week we used gouache and now we're using alcohol markers so we're really covering a lot of different mediums here. And this is the finished piece. Time to see what prompt 13 is. Hey, I mean we could do a superhero, that could be fun. Like location? Maybe? Now grab in the watercolour because for this prompt we're going to be painting a portrait. Originally my first idea was to do a superhero, which does seem like the obvious choice, but I couldn't really think of a way that I wanted to create that. On the live stream I asked what other people were thinking for Cape and somebody mentioned Little Red Riding Hood, which honestly I never would have thought of. There's a classic red cape and as soon as I thought of that I thought of the cadmium red shade that I have and I absolutely love it. So that's what we're doing. First up we're painting this face and then shortly you'll see the entire piece come together. I mean you might be able to guess what we're doing for this. It's Little Red Riding Hood in my art style but now we're reaching for that gorgeous cadmium red shade. It's a lovely warm vibrant red that's perfect for this cape. I never usually like reds, but this one, I'm not a huge fan of something like flame red or vermilion, but this one I absolutely love. The idea is that the entire background is the cape, so we're painting the entire page and then popping a cute little bow on the neck. I think this piece turned out really cute, and the paper didn't actually struggle too much considering it doesn't really handle watercolour well. I was quite impressed this time. And I love the way this bright red background looks as you flip through the pages. Now for prompt 14, it is Burrow. An animal? Digging in a hole? But that's a little bit basic, so... I don't know, this one's quite open-ended, we'll figure it out as we go. I said that we were probably going to be drawing an animal digging in a hole and that's pretty much what we're doing. It's a cute little family of bunnies, although I think you'll shortly be able to tell which one I used a reference for. We're using alcohol markers because I really want to try and get used to them. Before this Peachtober challenge I'd only really used them like once on actual paper. I like to doodle with them a little bit for the doodle diary challenge, but I haven't really properly used them and so far it's been a lot of fun. So here we are attempting to draw a bunny. The one in the middle definitely turned out a lot better than I was expecting. It's just a shame I can't say the same about the other two. This piece has a lovely white border so I'm reaching for that black alcohol marker and we're drawing a cute little burrow. Now that the black is all filled in we're reaching for those colour pencils. This wasn't exactly planned, but unfortunately, the alcohol marker kind of activated the biro on the other side of the page. So you can see, we kind of need to cover this up. Adding more alcohol marker is just making it bleed even more, so that's not fixing it. We need to put colour pencil on top of the marks. Though, I did get a little bit carried away, adding fur and whiskers and a lot of stars all in the background that make no sense whatsoever. Honestly, I was really surprised at how easily the light colour pencil went on top of the black. 
I guess these are Karen Dash Luminance though, so that is kind of to be expected, but they were really good. And I think we managed to save it. I think we managed to cover up the bleed through. And I think this one went really cute. Apart from the two little bunnies, they didn't really. But I think the middle one went really, really well. I don't know, what do you think? The second week is all done. Make sure you're subscribed to see what we get up to in the third. If you are taking part in that challenge this month, how are you finding it? I hope you're doing well. I'll see you in a few days. Bye-bye.